uh, from what I read, I, I, I think that, that all sorts of uh, changes, uh, at least temporary changes, may, may be possible. One can certainly get states of calm and alter, alter the brain rhythms and have states of, 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 of trance. Whether, whether they're permanent changes, I don't know. But any learning experience changes the brain, and, for, and nothing more, uh, incidentally, than musical learning so that the, the brains of musicians uh, are visibly different and even grossly different from the brains of other people. Yeah, um, very, very strongly. Uh, uh, I've, um, I mean, most of my own work is with elderly people with neurological problems of one sort or another, and I can see how their lives can be transformed by, by music and sometimes sometimes by poetry and art. But say people with Parkinson's may be unable to move or speak unless there's music. Uh, people who have Alzheimer's and are confused and lost and agitated or disoriented can be focused wonderfully sometimes by familiar music which will give them a link to, to the past and to their own memories which they can't access in, a, in, in any other way. Um, and uh, sometimes people who are aphasic and have lost the power of language can get it back through, through music. Um, now, I don't have direct experience with, uh, uh, with young people, but from everything I read, I think that uh, music and, and other forms of art n need to be an essential part of education. I mean, this is an essential part of being human. And uh, and although I wouldn't sort of locate ev everything in the in the right hemisphere, we are you know we are not sort of calculating machines. We we need we need the arts as much as we need everything else. Well, this this so-called Mozart effect was was described um, actually in a very modest way about 15 years ago and it then got taken up by the media and hyped and exaggerated uh, in a way which was rather embarrassing to the to the original describers and um, i think there's very little to suggest that that a little mozart as background will make any difference on the other hand real engagement with music uh, and especially performing music or listening attentively can make a great deal of difference and uh, especially early in life, you see this in people, say, who do Suzuki training. And one, a year of Suzuki training can, uh, can not only enhance one's musicality and alter the brain quite visibly, but the effect may, um, seems to, uh, to leak over to some extent into forms of visual thinking and logical thinking, uh, uh, um, pattern recognition, and so forth. So. Um, a little, a little musical background is uh, uh, is not enough, but but real musical engagement, I think, can be very important. One needs to distinguish, you know. Um, um, Freud made a point, say, of distinguishing neurotic misery and depression from what he called common unhappiness. The common unhappiness is what we, we all feel when, when we're grieved, when we lose people, when things go wrong. Um, uh, Prozac can be, has been, and can be a lifesaver for people who are pathologically depressed. Um, uh, depression is the main cause of suicide. Uh, and uh, antidepressants of all sorts have been very crucial. There are many different sorts, and sort of Prozac belongs to a particular sort. But there's all the difference in the world having a medication for a pathological state and something which you want to enhance sort of normal living. Um, and uh, I mean, this, this becomes a huge issue, whether it's steroids with athletes or, 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 or whatever. Um, uh, if Prozac can produce a sort of bland, nonchalant uh, state, uh, the question is whether such a state is, is a good one or whether it's morally responsible. 
um, I think one needs to have all one's emotional sympathies and sensitivities and vulnerabilities out, out there. It sometimes seems as if childhood itself is being, is, is, it becomes a diagnosis, becomes a disease. Hundreds of thousands of children, I think, are probably improperly diagnosed as hyperactive or as having attention disorder of one sort or another and are put on the amphetamines or Ritalin. And um, I think there do exist genuine forms of attention hyperactivity disorder which, which may need medication, but I think these are pretty rare, and I suspect that nine out of 10 kids who are diagnosed as having this do not have any such syndrome, but are reacting to situations at school, or it's a normal stage of, of development. Um, kids, kids are impulsive. This is, this, is, this is the nature of youth. It's, it's, it's one of the wonders of youth. It's one of the things one needs to keep all, all through life. I, I think there are real dangers of over-medicating children and, uh, and of us all over-medicating ourselves. And it may not stop with over-medicating because sooner or later we're going to be able to have our genes altered or to have computer chips put in our brain and the whole business of, you know, of quote unquote an enhanced existence as opposed to a natural one is, is, is going to come up.